Hi, it's Mr. Mac. This video is going to attempt to tell the difference between a confidence interval and a confidence level. As you already know, a confidence interval is an interval that attempts to capture the true parameter. It attempts to say something about the population. It could be the population mean, the population proportion, whatever it is we're interested in knowing about the population. It is an interval. It has a low number, high number, and all the numbers in between. And it's just trying to get an idea of where that, that population parameter actually is. The confidence level is one particular number. It's usually a high number, like 90, 95, 99%, something like that. And it tells us how sure we are that it, this interval that we created actually does capture the true mean. Now, before I write the formal definition here, I want to go to an applet and investigate what this confidence level actually is. So open up a browser if you like, or you can just watch this. Uh, go to a Google, the Google search and go to confidence interval applets. Okay, now you're looking for confidence intervals and it should say WH Freeman. I'm gonna click on there. And we get this cool uh, website that says confidence intervals. It does use Java to run. So if you don't have Java, you can download it for free. Uh, if you are having trouble doing that, you can come see me for help, or you can just watch this video and see what I do. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And so we've got this applet here. This red line is representing a population of some kind. Now this population looks uh, normal. And your population could be whatever, uh, but this population has a mu on this green line, as you can see, and it goes all the way down because it's going to kind of show you something here in a bit. So I have my confidence level built at 95 so far. That's what I've selected. And I'm going to hit sample. What it's going to do, it's going to build a confidence interval based off a sample that came from this population. So this sample was right here. It was to the right a little bit more than the true mean. And it went to the right with the margin of error. And from the statistic, it went to the left, the margin of error, and it created this beautiful confidence interval. Now, this confidence interval was a success because it did capture the true mean. You can see this green line is the true mean. And sure enough, it did go through that confidence interval. So this confidence interval was a success. I could do it again and again and again and again. So I've got five confidence intervals. This last one barely captured it but it was still contained, so that still was a success. So far, I'm five for five on my confidence interval actually containing the true parameter. Now, I want you to show you, uh, I want you to see a couple things here. Notice that these are all the same size. They were all done the same way from the same population. They were chosen randomly, the, the sample. And they're all the same exact width because they were done the same exact way. They're just in different spots because of the sample was the samples were different. Now, I'm going to hit 50 here, and it's going to add 50 more. So now we're at 55 total. But two of those actually missed. You can see them in here. They're both red. This, uh, co this confidence interval, the sample was too low. So when they added that margin of error, it didn't quite reach the mean. So it didn't capture it. Same thing here, except it was too high. And so right now, 53 out of 55, I'm at 96% of these confidence intervals that were built actually captured the true mean. I'll hit it again. I'll hit it a few times till I get to about 500. And you can see 96% of these hit. Now, ideally, it would be 95%. Um, but as we know, the, large, the law of large numbers, you need to keep doing this repeatedly many, many times before it actually approaches this. Now, if I kept doing it, eventually, it should go down to 95. There it goes. So eventually, in the long run, it approaches 95%, and 95% of these, we would expect, would capture the true mean. Now, let me show you real quick, if I set it to 80%, what, what happens. Here's my first interval. You'll notice, again, it's doing the same thing. It's taking a sample, and it's building a confidence interval by adding the margin of error and subtracting the margin of error. But you'll notice these ones are shorter, and that's because the percentage is lower. And it's kind of a trade-off. We're not so sure that we're going to capture the true mean now, but our interval is shorter, which tells us a little bit more about the population. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. Again, I'll do 50, 50, 50. I'll do this about 500 times. And we can see 82% of these. I got a little lucky here. 82% actually did capture the true mean.
Now, 80 is kind of a low confidence level. We usually don't go that low. We try to stay in the 90s. 90s is usually the lowest we'll go, but it is possible to have an 80%, and I kind of wanted to show you the, the difference between the two. Okay, so let's go back to our notes here, and let's talk about what a confidence level is. We know it's how sure we are that this interval captures the true mean, but here's what it really is. If many confidence intervals were constructed the same exact way, this is the expected percentage of those intervals that would contain the true parameter. So that applet shows exactly what a confidence level is. If we continue to build confidence intervals, what proportion of those would actually capture the true mean? Or what would we expect? That's what confidence level is. Now, not only do you have to know these two things, but you also have to interpret them. And I'll tell you to be careful, especially on the second one, do not say the word probability. Many kids lose points on the AP exam or they get partial credit because they say 95% is the probability that this interval captures the true mean. And that is not what it is. So I'm going to make a little note here. Do not say probability. That's a big, big no-no. Because when we're actually talking, if I wanted the probability that this interval captures the true mean, the answer to that would be it's either does or it doesn't. It's either 100% or it's zero for this particular interval. In order to even say probability or think that way, we have to have many, 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 many confidence intervals. And it's the proportion of those that actually capture the true mean that we're interested in. So. When you're interpreting the confidence level, especially, make sure you're talking about repeatedly sampling or repeatedly doing confidence intervals. You have to be, it's the percent of a bunch of intervals, not just this particular one. Whereas the top one is this particular one. The, when you, this particular confidence interval, that's the red, that's the top. So let's, let me show you a quick problem um, that illustrates both of these. And Ru it says Ruben uh, built a 95% confidence interval to estimate the mean height of 8th graders. His interval was 59 inches to 64 inches. We're going to interpret the confidence interval and the confidence level. Now, he did all the work for us. Uh, he, he gave us an answer already. Uh, we just need to interpret these two things. Now, what I really want you to understand is this first one, the red one, is actually in the four-step process. You're going to see both of these on the AP exam a lot, uh, confidence intervals, interpreting those, and confidence level. However, only the top one is actually in the four-step process. They would have to, if they wanted you to interpret the confidence level, they have to ask that separately. But I guarantee you this is on the AP exam, both of these, multiple times. So you got to make sure you know these inside and out. So let's do the interpreted confidence interval. This is the conclusion of the four-step process. If you were constructing a confidence interval on the AP exam, this would be the very last step. He did all the stuff. Uh, he did all the work for you already. We're going to assume everything's done correctly. This is what you would put at the end. It's interpreting the confidence interval. We are 95% sure or confident. Both those words are okay that the interval, and then tell me what interval that it is, 59 inches to 64 inches, captures, or you can say the word contains, the true, or you can say uh, population. And then we want to use our uh, whatever we are using to measure. In this case, we're measuring mean. Sometimes we'll be measuring proportion. Don't say the word parameter because it's a little too vague. So he he's estimating the mean height of eighth graders. So I want to say the, the word mean here. So, uh, and I'm adding context here. So we're 95% confident that the interval captures or contains the true mean. And then you got to add context. Height oops, of eighth graders. So that is a confidence interval. This is the conclusion part of our four-step process. Memorize this sentence. Write it down. Um, I have three. I have a couple of choices here, of three different times. I would kind of ignore those and just just stick with one if you could, uh, just so you're 
not confusing yourself. But those are all acceptable words. So let me read it again. We are 95% confident that the interval 59 inches to 64 inches captures the true population mean of height of 8th graders. The confidence level is referring to that 95%. Again, this is not probability. Do not say the word probability. Also, this is not part of the four-step process. They would ask this separately on the AP exam. So when it tells you to construct a confidence interval, this is not part of that. This would be separate. It could be part B, um, or it could just be a completely separate problem. So this is referring to the 95%. So this is how we would write it. If we made or constructed many confidence intervals the same way, of course, we'd be doing different using different samples, but we're doing it the same exact way. We're sampling, we're building our confidence intervals. We expect 95% of those uh, intervals to contain or capture the true mean. Oh, and I need to add context. Height of 8th graders. Oops. Notice that both of these Interpretations have context. That's true throughout this class. Anytime I say the word interpret, you need to have context. And that's the same here. Also, make sure you understand the difference. The top is referring specifically to this one interval. What does it mean? Whereas the bottom is referring to, you need to say, many intervals. What percent of those would we expect to capture the mean or the parameter, whatever it is? In this case, it's a mean. We'll practice this more in class. Make sure you know the difference. This is huge. Uh, make sure you can tell the difference and you know what it's asking for each of these.